Hey, this is Mike Campbell from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I am at the clubhouse where we made all our records and did all our rehearsing. And I just woke up the other day and realized I've collected guitars my whole life and amps, and I just don't have room for a lot of them anymore. So I've decided to sell some of the nicer pieces. Old amps, there's an old national amp, a Gibson amp, which was turned on to me by the cars. Some Fender amps. This amp here is called a Heath Kit. This is like the first amp I ever had when I was learning to play guitar. Fenders, all kinds of fenders, lots of basements, uh, showmans, and vibroverbs, basement oxbloods, which you I mean, basements are like just, you know, these older ones are choice. You know, they, they sound about the best of any amp you're ever gonna hear. Nice amps, you know, but I just don't have room for them all. And also we have some guitars. This is Chinner, he's gonna help me out. Hey, Chinner. Hey, okay, friend. this is something, it's a Red Les Paul from the 70s, I believe. And I use this uh, with the Heartbreakers for a string of dates we did at the Vic in Chicago. And I like this because it has a string bender on it, which you rarely see on a Gibson, but this is a great sounding guitar, real workhorse. And I, like, I hate to part with a lot of these, but something's gotta go. Then I have a Blacklist Paul that I picked up in Hawaii when I was rehearsing for the Fleetwood Mac tour. And I never knew these existed, but it's nice because it's a thin body, so it's not too heavy, and it sounds really good. And uh, it's I use, on it. it's got a compressor built in, I think, one of these knobs it goes it's up awesome. and down, so you can kick it up to 11 if you have to. And I use that on uh, several uh, Fleetwood Mac shows. The Taylor 12-string acoustic, which sounds amazing. Get it right here, and a Yamaha 12-string acoustic. This is an interesting guitar. I saw this in a guitar store on tour with Fleetwood Mac, and I thought it was like an Gretsch acoustic electric. I thought it would be great for the song The Chain, because it's got kind of a drone. <laughs> this is an Epiphone, hollow body. I have a 56 Gibson Black Beauty and I really love it. And I was doing a tour and I wanted to take uh, that out on the road, but I was scared to do that. So I got this uh, substitution, which is identical. It's just from the 80s, but it's got a wang bar on it and it plays really, really good. And moving along, oh, this is a beautiful old Gibson semi-acoustic, like a uh, uh, Scotty Moore type sound, two P90s, thin, hollow body. Beautiful sound. And here's a Bo Diddley model. Oh, it's sticky. I'll have to clean that up. Um, this speaks for itself. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a Epiphone Sheraton in white. Uh, really uh, high-end uh, Epiphone. It's got the beautiful inlay. Sounds amazing. Scott Thurston has a sunburst one that he used on the Heartbreakers tour a lot. This is a great Guild Thunderbird, which I have another one. This is the kind of guitar that Giselle Yanofsky used in the Love and Spoonful, and uh, Muddy Waters uh, sometimes played these Guild Thunderbirds. Oh yeah, it's got the kickstand in the back. You don't even need, need a stand. Just pop this out and you're ready to go. <laughs> Those are the only ones that ever did that. It's a great idea. This is a really nice Gibson lap steel, brown SG with humbuckers, loud guitar. Here's a uh, Chandler Dobro electric. Oh, these are great. This is a Harmony Rocket. I've got a couple of these. Do we need, do we need light? This is um, was used by Keith Richards, uh, this, this model, on the early Stones records. They're really nice pickups, and you don't see too many of them. It's called a Harmony Rocket. This is a Trussard custom-made guitar. It looks like a piece of metal, but it's relatively light. Kind of Plays down. really good, uh, kind of patterned a little bit after a Tele or a Jaguar. Um, Jaguar. Moving right along, here behind me, I almost knocked it over, thing called a Monza. And what's cool about it is it's got its own built-in amplifier. This is a nice guitar to have if you don't have an amp handy. And I remember when I was in the studio with Dylan one day, I had this down there, and he went crazy and had his manager go find one. They're kind of hard to find, but it plays really well. 
a Vox acoustic electric 12 string. If you want to sound like the Kinks, Lola, or whatever, it's called a Silver Sage. Plays well, tunes good. And like I said, it's got a pickup in it if you want to use it on stage. Ooh, this is a really choice one for anybody that really knows guitars. This is a K Barney Kessel from the 50s. I would normally not part with this, but I have another one and I just don't need two, but this is really choice. And it's got these big fat pickups and an Art Deco look, really nice instrument and pretty rare. It's cool, this is a box called the Invader and this has all the gadgets on it, like a tuner, a palm wah, fuzz tone, repeater, filter, and it's a great guitar, it plays really good and uh, sounds like the 60s. Bill Wyman, in the Stones' early days, played a Framus bass, which is what this is. And uh, so that's, that's very 60s sounding as well. This is a really nice guitar. It's like a Tele, it's a custom made thing. But uh, I like the body so much that I actually put a fatter pickup in the treble position and I put a string bender on it. So you can do that uh, Clarence White sort of stuff. And on we go. And this, this last one here I'll show you is a Tiesco Del Rey, which are pretty rare, that uh, David Lindley used to play a lot. And I know Bob Dylan liked these quite a bit. And they're really nice sounding guitars. Very Ventures sounding. This custom amp I used with the speakers at the Fillmore West. We did a month of shows up there in 1997, I think, or 99. These are great sounding amps if you want to sound like Credence Clearwater. It's got a cool vibrato. Some magnetones, which are nice studio amps. They have a really cool sounding vibrato. There's a Watkins Echo unit, which is from England, which is called a uh, something cat. But those are good uh, Echoplex type things. And then, uh, so anyway, there's a lot of stuff. And you'd be doing me a big favor if you buy some of this stuff and I can get it out of my garage so I can buy new stuff. Thanks, and uh, I guess that's it for today. See you later. Good luck.